Hello, my name is Eric Jarvis. I am a uh, associate professor at Duke University Medical Center and also a Howard Hughes Medical Institute investigator. And I am a uh, scientist who studies uh, complex uh, traits generated by the brain. And I'm interested in general brain function and how the brain controls uh, complex behaviors. And the behavior that I'm most interested in we call vocal learning. Uh, or, and I'm I'm going to talk to you about the brain pathways for vocal learning. Now, you've got to understand, what is vocal learning? Not everybody has heard about this uh, trait, uh, but uh, it is something that you do every day. You use it to actually uh, produce language, or spoken language. So let me explain what that's about. First, we're going to talk about that, the behavior itself, its convergence, and the brain pathway. So <clears throat> vocal learning is a very rare trait and we're going to call it production type of vocal learning, like a motor behavior, is to move something, but in this case, to move the uh, larynx. Five groups of mammals are known to have this, us humans, and in us humans, that gives us the ability to imitate speech, what I'm doing now. Dolphins and whales also have it, uh, bats, and recently it was shown elephants. Elephants uh, imitating truck sounds along the road in a, in a zoo in Asia. And I recently heard about an elephant who puts his trunk in his mouth and moves up and down his lips, producing some words in Korean that a Korean person will know, like move back, move forward. But um, <coughs> uh, I couldn't understand uh, because I don't speak Korean. Uh, and then uh, also in seals. And then three groups of birds, parrots, hummingbirds, and songbirds. And the word par parrot has even become synonymous with vocal mimicry, like uh, Polly want a cracker and so forth. Uh, hummingbirds, many people don't realize, but they have these songs that are learned. They're very high in pitch, uh, and they uh, transmit that information culturally from one generation to the next, like these other vocal learners do, and then finally songbirds. So what is it about that, of this trait that's different from other abilities? Well, vocal learning depends on a another type of learning called uh, auditory learning, but it's different from auditory learning and everybody that has ears basically has auditory learning. So what is it? And a good example is dogs can understand the word sit or learn to understand the word sit or siente se in Spanish, usuari in Japanese. They all mean the same thing, which is to sit. Dogs can even understand some rudimentary syntax like come here boy, fetch the newspaper. But dogs have a very difficult time saying siente se, o suwari, or sit, or come here boy. But vocal learners can hear this information and then repeat it back to you, uh, and mostly of their own species vocalizations, but some can do it of others, uh, other species like us. And <clears throat> but I don't want to give you the sense that once you have vocal learning, all these species can have spoken language. That's not the case. But they do have the ability to at least to imitate some rudimentary sounds, and some more complex than others. So what about the genetic relationships of these vocal learners? Well, shown here, I have a family tree of birds and a family tree of mammals. And I have, have the vocal learners highlighted in red. For instance, here the hummingbirds, the uh, parrots down there, and the songbirds way down there. Likewise, amongst the mammals here in this uh, tree. And what we can see is that the vocal learners are dispersed unevenly throughout this family tree amongst many other species like lions, tigers, and bears that don't have this ability. And <clears throat> uh, so it's been argued that, let's say, hummingbirds, parrots, and songbirds have each evolved this trait independently of a common ancestor. So these black dots here denote uh, what we would consider independent gains of vocal learning. It's also possible that uh, back here, at uh, some point where there was a common ancestor between uh, parrots and songbirds that might have had vocal learning, and then the subossine songbirds lost the traits. Uh, that would be like humans down here in this family tree and chimpanzees having a common ancestor that was a vocal learner, and then uh, chimpanzees losing speech, but humans maintaining it. So, so one of the questions that we've been asking is, if the behavior is similar across these species and apparently uh, convergent, that is, 
they came about this solution independent of a common ancestor. Well, what about the brain pathways?